What's going on, everybody? So, what I said was I was going to start doing these at the beginning of each month, and this is the all-exclusive 10,000 PSA 10 Club. Now, we did two last month. It was just to show how quickly things were moving up. But from here on out, beginning of the month, somewhere in the first week, I'll push out all the updates onto this. And again, if anybody out there knows of another card that's high in a pop 10 count for PSA 10s, just let me know. I'm trying to get stuff, you know, that we know it's going to probably get over 10,000. And I did forget, Zion has moved into first place. Zion has moved into first place. So with this here, um, you guys will see the card, the number uh, that responds to the card, the pop count, and then off to the right there is how many it's gone up since the last time we've talked about it. Some pretty big numbers on there. I mean, we were talking about maybe three weeks at the most, plus you had the national going on. Again, no way am I telling anybody to buy, sell, trade, or hold these cars. This is just for informational purposes out there. And you can use it for however you want to onto it. So as you see, Nakuna, 18684, up 79. Zion now has taken first place. I forgot to move him up. Uh, 216 more of the Prism PSA 10s have populated. 94 for Soto. 118 for the Luca Prism rookie. Ooh, Morant, up 98. Tatis up 184 for his tops rookie. Petey up 54 only. Um, the Griffey tops traded another 49 PSA 10s. Lux up 136. Woods up 188. LeBron, 232 more. Newest member from last time along with Soto. Up another 52 onto his tops chrome. Now, Trey Young probably will make it next month. He's about nine, it was it 96 away. We had 98 already, so he should be a member next month. Wander could be close because I know a lot of people have them chromes out there. And then Tatis tops chrome. We'll probably see it by the end of the year. So, like I said, this is just for general knowledge. Use it for however you want out there. Um, just something I want to do monthly. And this was starting off on something I was doing for my own, and people are like, man, you should put this out in a video. Because this is really good information. So I wanted to do that. Now hitting the second part of this video. I want to talk about some updates to some videos. I did get to see the police report. For the guy that got arrested at the National. And he is facing a misdemeanor theft. For $400 in cards. Off that one vendor. So it shows that like those 100 cards roughly were like. Dollar, two dollar, three dollar cards. That he was putting in his bag and part of the report talks about he brought out like an eyeglass case and was sliding him in there then putting him in his bag let's see they said he is banned from that building he's never allowed back in that rosemont building and he's also banned from the national so kind of kind of uh some something did happen with it now there was still something like around 100 cards that they don't know how he got them he said he paid for them has no receipt you know how that goes it was cash of course right but which it might have been it might have been but you know when you put all the stuff in front of me i i would say personally in my own opinion they, they were not his cards um but yeah quite interesting on to that stuff and what i did find out and which i was really shocking is that when you look at the national each charge is by vendor. It's not for the overall event. So say he stole like from 20 dealers at $400 a pop, he would receive 20 charges, you know, of misdemeanor versus then that one big felony charge. But I don't know how they wrap it all up. I'm not a law student or lawyer, even though I got a bachelor's degree in criminal justice many moons ago. But honestly, I just used that so I could have promotion points and stuff like that when I was in the army. It was an easy, quick classes, and it was some of the stuff was interesting. Some of it was, but for me to remember all that statutes and stuff, yeah, it probably won't happen. But uh, let's see here, other news out there offhand. There were some more cards identified along with those three that I showed earlier, but I could not find a post anywhere onto it. Let me see if I can pull it real quick on my phone. I know somebody posted about it on Facebook, but I went back and I could not find it at all. And it was kind of shocking because some of the stuff that was put out there. Okay, I think this is it here. Let me read this. 
Okay, some of these cards were stolen at the show and trade nights. Now I'm going to read these off. It's a Herbert Panini Pre Precision Rookie Auto, 11 out of 25. That's a new one offhand. It has a big old four-color patch thing on, too, from what I'm seeing. It's a Panini 1 card, too. Uh, there's a Burrow Panini Optics, 17 out of 99. I cannot tell what the picture is, though. Yeah, I have no idea on that. Let's see. You already know about the Mount Castle Super Fractor, the LeBron and Kobe. Oops, crap. Dual auto. I don't know how to go back now. Here we go. Here we go. Um, the Kobe USA patch card, too. There was also a Panini Donruss Optic Baker Mayfield. It was a red PSA 10. Still number 441 37985. And also a mosaic green Jacob Eason PSA 10 serial 5228146. So that's a little bit more stuff that's now coming out that things have been stolen offhand from there. Um, I'm sure more and more will probably start coming out uh, off of the things that have been stolen along the way. And I'm trying to think, I had to redo this video because I logged into my wrong account and had that great buzzing sound in the background. So hopefully this sounds a lot better for everybody. But live on uh, Friday night, that'll be overtime, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Joey. And I think Jacob from the Monster Den is joining us. So this will be pretty good stuff coming across the board if Jacob is able to join. He's been a longtime breaker into the hobby. He was back in Vaughn TV era where Razzing was allowed and all this stuff. And we'll, we'll probably talk a little bit about Razzing and stuff onto it in the raffles and not knowing how everything's going to go with the gambling or gaming licenses. Will they require it, you know, eventually for boxes since there's odds on boxes? But a lot of knowledge with Jacob. I mean, me and him do have conversations back and forth, always, you know, trying to you know, run ideas by each other because we both think alike, but we also also think outside the box to where, you know, different ideas float through and different thought process, or different, not thought processes, but different thoughts on different ideas that are out there to where you could see it from another person's uh, vantage point. But that's really about it. I wanted to get this out here. Like I said, I'm not too sure if there's going to be a video out on Thursday or Friday before we go live. A lot of the stuff that I'm seeing is just repeat stuff out there from uh, mostly people not paying friends and family, you know, doing whatever, uh, Zelle and Cash App on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. But we beat that stuff like a dead horse, you know, always pay goods and services, PayPal, stuff like that there. I'm trying to think what else I've noticed a lot of here recently. Oh, the other thing is, one thing I will say from uh, talking to a lot of people that were set up at the National, I mean, other than the piece where predominantly it was all PSA and BGS, there was maybe a table or two with SGC, and what's funny was the one guy wasn't buying SGC slabs, and he was selling them. Um, HGA was only out there with like maybe a booth or two, from what I understand, maybe three at the most. They were saying pretty much what I, they would guess at was around 95% was probably um, PSA and Beckett slabs. Probably about 3% of that would have been SGC, 1% to maybe HGA, and 1% to all the other companies like GMA and all that out there. But... Overall, nobody really talked bad other than the traffic that was going through there. A lot of people stopping, taking videos of other people's deals and stuff like that, which is upsetting to customers because they don't want people knowing how much money they're spending. That's their own privacy, and I, I can, I can, you know, understand that. It'd be one thing to say, hey, man, can I tape this real quick or show what it is and don't show the guy or something like that, but... I can see where a lot of people were upset over that. But overall, a lot of people had good experiences out there. Um, F1, from my understanding, was not moving a whole lot other than that, uh, what was it, the out of 10 Hamilton that Sasha T did to deal with. And somebody posted a video out there of the price that, you know, he saw, got it for, and I'm sure he didn't want that going out. I'm trying to think. 
UFC was pretty good out there, they were saying. Um, a lot of people really didn't know that there was that much vintage out there, and they were just sh shocked by the amount of vintage that they were seeing. A lot of big deals did go down, a lot of big trades to where people were moving product from one person to another, basically, so that they might have an easier time moving cards, you know, and stuff like that, plus fresh inventory. Uh, trying to think offhand. But overall, a lot of positive experiences that I've heard from the National. I mean, I'm not talking about, like, the COVID piece, how many people got it and stuff like that there. I'm sure we'll start hearing that more and more. I can tell you, as a matter of fact, our numbers in Kentucky have gone up dramatically. Just put another thing out. But, I mean, that's another subject. I, I know it's kind of sore with a lot of people, the COVID thing. We're probably going to hit a little bit on that on overtime. Um, that if we do go back down, even though we're told not lockdown, but if states start doing stuff like that, what, how that could affect the card market again? Would there be a surge? Would there going to be a bump? You know, all kind of stuff like that. Pretty much about all I have off the top of my head, because I think I covered everything. I threw my notepad, or my, uh, what do you call it, a little sticky pad piece away earlier after I made the first video. But, like I said, you know, stop by over time Friday night if you miss it. You can always, you know, plug it in your ear somewhere or listen to it as you're driving on a road trip or something like that there. There's always a lot of information being put out. And even if you're not live with us and you're in the chat talk, and there's a lot of good stuff that gets put out overall, and you get to see different people's views on different pieces of everything across the board to where... You know, some people are like buying up base PSA 10s and some people think it's the poison of the hobby, you know, that it's going to be too high populated. A lot of stuff's going to drop in value. It's always interesting to hear different uh, viewpoints out there onto it. And for the most part, I will say we've uh, kept it pretty civilized in chat. I think I've only had to, since we started, um, ban two people that came in there and wow. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Maybe the one guy might have had a little bit uh, too much to drink or something, too. I don't know. But, yeah, if you guys can, stop by overtime Friday night. And then we'll start getting back in the videos. Also, uh, let me know what you guys think, you know, in the comments, as always, what, you, uh, with the, what happened in National with what was on the police report, what you guys think about this pop report. Is there anything I should be looking at adding to it? And then, if you guys are have any ideas for videos, I'm going to do one with a Pelican case that I bought. But I just learned somebody that's on the channel actually makes them, and it's, they use like more of the military grade cases. So I'm probably going to look at uh, probably getting one off of him because I'm looking for something a little more sturdier than what I have now. And I mean, they they look really, really nice. I'll, I'll see if I, I can pull a picture up uh, in another video on to what he makes. I'm not too sure if he wants to put his personal contact stuff out there yet or not, so I'll hold off on that. But, all right, everybody. I've been chit-chatting here for a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and get going. Definitely see you live Friday night. Take care.